We've been looking at muscles and joints and the skeleton, and so today we are going to dissect a chicken wing to look at how these different parts of the body work together. You're going to need a raw chicken wing and some cutting tools, like a pair of scissors, a very sharp knife, and then something to pick out things with, like a skewer. Don't forget your worksheet, which also has the questions on it that you need to answer. Here we have a chicken wing that you can see obviously is raw. It's had its feathers removed, although there are still one or two feathers in the skin over there. If you look at the chicken, this is its wing tip, and this is the area where it would be connected to the rest of the body. If we turn it over, you can see the outline of the muscles underneath. And if we hold it still, we can see the joints working on either side. If we zoom in, you can make out there is a little bit of cartilage. The red is your spongy bone, and that section over there, that is your compact bone. You can see the connective tissue over here, surrounding the muscle and holding the muscles onto the bone. We're going to try and remove the skin. Fortunately for us, because of the fact that this joint has been cut open, the skin has already been loosened a little bit at the top. And so all we need to do now using your scissors, whatever you have at home, is to slide underneath the skin and loosen it. Be careful not to cut the muscles underneath. Take your time because this does take a while to remove the skin from the underlying tissues. reason that the chicken skin is so difficult to remove is because of all the fat and connective tissue. So here underneath the skin, this yellowish stuff, this is all the fat tissue because it's all connected by this almost invisible connective tissue underneath. This, this stuff is called the fascia. If I can just pick some up here quickly. Well, you can see through it. If you look at, through that, that shiny bit there, that's part of the fascia, which covers everything in your body and holds all of your organs together. And so the connective tissue is mixed up in this fascia, which helps hold the skin onto the rest of the body. You need to do a drawing of your dissection and label as many muscles and tendons and bones and other bits and pieces as you can find or as you can see. So here, quite nicely, you can see that there is a blood vessel running along the leg here. And then obviously, at this point, it becomes very, very small, uh, becomes capillaries inside the muscle tissue. If you look up at this end, you can see there is a tendon connecting a muscle onto the bone. So that's attached to the muscle. While we're here, you can see the sort of shininess of the muscle. If I press there, it kind of looks a little bit like silvered or uh, slightly shiny. That is the epimysium of the muscle. That's the membrane on the outside of the muscle, holding the muscle fibers together. This joint, obviously, that you can just make out underneath all this tissue there, that joint is the elbow joint. This obviously is the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. And in here would be your uh, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. There you can see another 
tendon underneath it just runs along here that is connecting different muscles onto the bones. When you look at the muscles, you'll see that the muscles are attached to the bones above or below where they are. So if we have a look at this muscle, you can see that this muscle is actually attached on the bone below, in here. It's not attached onto this little humerus here. So if I pull on it, you can see that it shortens this whole wingtip. If I lengthen that again, Now remember that muscles can only pull, they can't push. So in order to straighten this wingtip again, we would need to pull on the muscles on the other side. Okay, so if I pull that down again, and then grab this muscle with my hand here and pull, there you can see it straightens the wingtip nicely. <laughs> Okay, once you've done your drawing, you can then actually start to dissect this fully and take all the muscles off so that we can see the joints. So this is an individual muscle that we've now cut off from the top of the humerus. We've cut off the tendon on that side, we've cut off the tendon on that side, and that's what the muscle looks like. You can see the tendons here. So that is the tendon that we cut off on the one end and underneath this blood vessel there is the end of the tendon at the other end. I've removed as many of the muscles as I can from this middle limb which is the equivalent of the forearm in human beings just to leave this one muscle in place and there you can see the tendon going all the way onto the wingtip and connecting over there. You can see how this tendon is part of the muscle. It grows into the muscle. It's not something sort of separate to the muscle. Underneath this, you can also see quite nicely the two bones of the forearm, which are your uh, radius and your ulna over here, connecting up at the top here into the bottom of the humerus. Here you can see the joint that I've cracked open at the bottom of the humerus and the top of the radius and the ulna. You can see that the radius and the ulna are concave in order for the bottom of the humerus, which is convex, to fit into it. This creates a really good hinge joint as they slide over one another. Feel free to play around with this joint and to see how it operates as a hinge sliding backwards and forwards when you do your dissection. The presence of the cartilage on the surfaces of these bones makes it super smooth so that there's no friction. Okay, I've removed the ulna from the chicken wing now. And this, as you can see, is a long bone. We have the two epiphyses and the long diaphysis between. By running my thumb, a thumbnail along the bone I've actually managed on the back to pull off the, the periosteum which you can just see is a sort of see-through membrane over there um, and as I said it's just by actually scraping it off with my nail I've been able to pull that off underneath the other connective tissue and fat and things that you can see on top here. I've now snapped the ulna in half 
and you can see it's very bloody inside. That is the marrow cavity with the red bone marrow inside of it. That is what you would suck out if you're having a stew with a nice big bone. We talk about the murch that you eat. That's what you're sucking out is the cooked red uh, bone marrow. All around the edge here, this kind of white layer of the bone, that is your compact bone on the outside. And there are obviously blood vessels and all sorts of things all the way through this. Okay, there you can see the red bo uh, bone marrow, or the spongy bone marrow, uh, that I've now taken out of that cavity, which is completely soft, completely spongy. If you look back at your worksheet now, there are a whole lot of questions for you to answer, which you need to submit in addition to the drawings that you have done of your dissection.